Peace and blessings. <clears throat> Apex Solar One. I'm gonna spend some time with y'all today. I'm just relaxing right now. In my outer body or out of my inner body. I'm having a, uh, a trans uh, transmission coming in right now. And I just wanna talk to people today about uh, life in general. Um, things that we choose to believe. I'm actually going to start off with dropping a little sciences on you. Science meaning to know, things for you to know. One of them off the top is to share with y'all that it's not actually what you think about that's going to change anything. It's what you do that's going to change something. I'll say that again. It's not actually what you think about doing that's going to change anything. It's what you actually do that's going to get things done and change stuff. And change is maybe the hardest thing for, quote unquote, a human being to do. Those who share the info with me understand when I say human being. I'm trying to appeal to everyone. Solar children can take this, uh, or men and women can take their selves out of that. That I'm speaking in general because I'm just in a sharing mood today. We're going to get down to what we're doing with this Thanksgiving thing. Uh, it's beautiful that the families get together at any time, on any month, any day of the year that the family chooses to do that. Come together, eat, you know, and talk. A lot of us drink, y'all drink, I'm not a drinker, but a lot, you know, drink, whatever, socialize. But it's bonded with family and we get caught up in that moment. And because that's, like I said, we're solar people, quote unquote, spiritual people, if you need it like that. We really embrace this day because it's like, oh, I'm going to see my cousins, my aunts, the food, the pies, the this, the that, the that. And I've been asked many places you know, to go, I've been invited many places, which I'm grateful, so grateful, because there's some people out here on certain holidays, whether we should be celebrating them or not, don't really have any place to go. So still be mindful that this day can feed a lot of people. Be mindful to take a plate out to the local crackhead, to the local, what we would call bum in the street or what we would call crackhead. I'm not trying to be funny. To the, to the person you, you know may need a plate, a good plate. Those are the good things that can come out of this. But we must keep focus on what Thanksgiving truly is. And um, we're gonna get to that, we're gonna get to that. I'm gonna leave y'all on the string a little bit, but, but just be mindful that it's not all good. Just be mindful that not to disturb the day that you are getting together and have a bunch of arguments in the family and backsliding and back talking, really make it a peaceful day because it's not a peaceful day. It's not a day that we should be celebrating. And being that I was invited by family so many different places, this is the year I chose to step back so that I can really be an example of trying to start to act out what I know in life from experiences and what I know not to do and what I know to do. If I trust everyone was in accord and we did a Thanksgiving, it would be fine. But I would just suggest that on this day, all families, all y'all, Nubian families, black families, stop at some point of the day and teach those children in that house what this day is really all about just at some point of the day so that they won't traditionally carry it on. But let's let's just get into it then. Get into, all right. Let's just get into it then. There were natives here in North America. This is this is this is his story, his story. He's telling you this. This is what I know. This is an account that happened. There were natives, you want to call them Indians, tribes, whatever. They, was this, they were on this land. Why do you think it's called reservation? When you go to a restaurant, you make a reservation. You get there, somebody else can't be at your table. Why? Because it's reserved for you. 
this land was reserved for someone else and to a European culture. Forget about that good white man. You figure out who came. What type of person, what type of... You figure it out. Europeans came. And these natives offered them all that they could. Didn't know these people, didn't see these kind of people before. These people who come, these glaciated people who come from non-nutrition plant life. That's why they're vitamin deficient. Because they come from a place where their plant life, because of the ice age that they come from, I'm telling you the introduction to the from the Europeans to these natives from a whole nother clim uh, climate, from a whole nother place, coming from out of caves and ice ages, where their diet lacked zinc and selenium and certain other nutrients that you need to be sane. No selenium, it, that's, that's, that will mess with your mind. Uh, 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 lack of zinc is, is dealing with your nerves, your nervous system. You're dealing with being an agitated person. And it's so uh, many other nutrients that their plant life or their diet was lacking that they didn't possibly have access to because of climate. And they were not fed these nutrients that we have. They were not given what we have properly. And they become a savage group of people. And these people travel. And let's just get to the natives. And these natives meet these pale people. These, these vitamin D... Uh, 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 Lackers, people that lack a certain, these people who pineal gland does not work like ours. Your pineal gland is, lots call it the third eye. But we have a pineal gland that produces our melanin in our body, that brown, browning uh, makes us the skin tone we are. There's a lot more I can say to that. I can tell you it's a carbon structure, but we'll go with melanin. I go with carbon because I go with what's on the periodic table. To me, if it's not on the periodic table, it's not natural. Uh, for the lack of the better, your pineal gland is your head gland. It's the rulership of all your glands in your body. And it produces your pigment and it produces the color in you. And the Europeans lack that. So I'm getting to that because the natives saw these pale people these lunar based people lunar moon created under a lunar cycle the lunar being predominantly sulfur sulfur based sulfur is pale in color anything created under that cycle will be pale in color you come from a different trop uh, atmosphere you're tropical you come from a whole different place you've been coming to and fro this plane this, this planet called Terra when you got here and began creating what we would call Europeans, etc., etc., Orientals, etc., etc. When we got here, we began creating these beings. You understand that? And they fall under what we would call creation or a lunar cycle or their lunatic. And these are the beings that the, pet, uh, the natives saw. These are the beings that the natives embrace that we call European. And they study a constellation called Europa is where they get their name from. They study a constellation called Europa. This is a female goddess or something like that that they follow. And you cut the A off and you get in a European or peon or whatever. European, or you know what a peon is. So it's really in their name, Euro from this god. Europa, goddess or god, whatever. Anyway, the natives embraced them. It's happened over years, years and years. Taught them how to hunt. Taught them how to survive here. Embraced them. Gave, shared with them land that was reserved from them, for them. Shared with this European. Because that's the kind of rhythm we, we, we come from. We come from a soul rhythm. We're kind people. We are actually sharers. We want to help you. 
We don't want to do to you what you turned around and did to us. We can't. It's not in our makeup. It's not in our uh, dinosaur. It's not in our serpent. And I'll get to that. It's not in our serpent genetic to do that. Uh, we embrace these people, taught them how to hunt animal, how to properly cook or nurture the animal, get it prepared to be put in your system. Uh, after years of this, embracing them and teaching them, this European turned around and on one day, they gathered their own wife and children, the Europeans. They took their wife and their children and took them to a big setup, like a banquet or something like that, but there was no nothing there. And they just told their children and their wives that they'll be back, all the men, the European men who had been dealing with the natives and, you know, getting, you know, technology from, knowledge from, getting inspiration from, getting a spiritual system from, learning how to eat, learning how to cook certain foods, learning how to sit down and eat, and use maybe your hands properly with washed or, ut or utensil, and not be savages and just eat and eat and tear off the animal raw. We gave them a system. In return, these Europeans first began to try to disease, uh, give these native diseases. You might have find this in your educational book where they say the Indians turned around and gave, the natives became Indians in the educational system. They gave, they sent uh, Europeans, the white man gave, sent the Europeans smallpox and blankets or, you know, something like that. That was one of their efforts to try to get rid of them. Why? These people are helping you. So this day that they left their wives and their children here, set up like a banquet with nothing there, they went off to today what we would call Connecticut in New York, somewhere around that area, on this terrain, on the eastern coast. And they gathered all of these natives that were there by way of a trick. You know, it's not verbatim, it's verbatim. This is this is the basic story. Somehow got them their confidence to show how they cook and what they can do. But what they did was they got them all together, like a million man march or a million woman march, got them all together and slaughtered and killed them. All of the natives, their wives, their children, all of the natives that was on that part of the terrain, they slaughtered them all. These were the same natives that had taught them, had embraced them, did not kill them, did not give them laws to live under when they got here just embraced them and wanted to share what we had with them. In return, the Europeans killed these people, their women, their children, everybody, and the men. And they took some of the men for a, a captive, slave, for slavery. They took all of their roast, everything that they were eating, everything that they had prepared, and they brought it back to their wives and their children who were waiting. With blood on them, with blood on the food, with, 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 with all uh, 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 what you would you call the the, the the spoils of war? They came back and returned and gave all of this food and everything that they had just murdered for and killed for to their wives and children. And on that day, their wives thanked them. They thanked them. The children turn around and jump on their daddy, like when you bring them groceries in. What if you tell your daughter next door, I killed these neighbors for it and took their groceries? She think you did a good thing. They think they did a good thing. The wife and the children thanked their father or thanked their leaders of their tribe, these European husbands. Thank you for this day that you letting us feast. And that's the beginning of why they call it a Thanksgiving day. They understood how happy their uh, family was. So what they did, day by day, they went around to all other native tribes and did the same thing and had this day every day. This is recorded. Thanksgiving was every single day of this European's life because every single day from there on, just like if you get a job and you see that this job fed your family, you're going to keep that job, work harder to keep feeding your family because you got to eat every day. Thanksgiving is just not one day that we should be eating like this. We are rich people. Y'all know it. We come, y'all got onks on. And y'all get up if you was really kings and queens. That feast would be in front of you every day. Every day. If that wouldn't be nothing. That's how you ate. That's because you're a farmer. You have access to all kind of great food, foods and stuff like that. 
And every day they began because this was successful. And every day they went around killing our brothers and sisters, the native tribes, who they call Indians now, whatever. The people that were here already before any European got here. You understand? The Olmacs, the, the Incas, there were governments set up here in North America before the existence of any man or European five or four thousand years ago. They tell you six. Just got here. Just got here robbing, raping, and killing. And that's what Thanksgiving is about because he continued on day after day after day killing, taking, bringing back. And their wives kept saying thank you for this day, meaning every day, because that man was killing every day. It's not until Abraham Lincoln, and you'll check this, Abraham Lincoln changed the, the, the Thanksgiving from everyday celebration and feast, because he even said that's too much killing, too much killing. So to stop the killing or calm it down, I mean, you've got enough, to, you've killed enough to, 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 to uh, 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 pantry this food for a year. You got enough. One day a year we do this. And that went into law and Thanksgiving, this day that they were killing every day just became one day. So the day you sit down at your table and thank the Lord or do all this or have Thanksgiving and say, I'm going out for Thanksgiving. Here I am, all my family. Sit down for a minute. Even you grown-ups, because y'all don't know this information. Sit down for a moment and teach the children around you. Teach the next generation what this day is really about and then change it. Because that's what the next thing is about. Changing things. You understand? I got a few more topics that I want to discuss with y'all. Just like if you change your diet, you change your health. You change your life. Don't hear nothing not to change it. Let the children see this. Let the children hear what really happened on Thanksgiving. But you teach them that we're here because it is a day that I get to see my sister, my brother, my aunt, my uncle, my grandmother, my this, my that, my that. We get to bond as a family. We're going to get drunk a little bit later. We know that. But let's just keep it real. And then try to plan another day other than this European guided day. And test ourselves. So let's get together like this on such and such. Somebody make up the date. And they're not going to take it as serious as this European. Because it's, it's, in, it's embedded in us now. And we say, no, that's not Thanksgiving. Because we, 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 we took on his nature. And his nature is to be a predator and a killer and a, and a thief. And this is why we gave him Ten Commandments. When he told us he was killing and stealing and committing adultery. It wasn't us doing it. It was him doing it. We're the wise serpent that came over. The serpent genetic is who the true solar beings used the genetic that was already immune to this planet. So that we wouldn't be sick. That's the genetic, the reptilian genetic that we come from. That's the dino from the, like the serpent is no more than the dinosaur family. Dino, where you think they get DNA from? They take everything and flip it and tell you that it's something bad. I tell you the serpent, teen people was nothing bad. It was all about the serpentine fire. But as far as back as you can go, you'll see serpent worship. Way before Christianity, Islam, Judaism, anywhere, you go back on real true planet information, not his story. Go get true planetary accounts of what happened on this planet. And you'll understand that the serpent, you'll view the serpent as something different. And not what Bibles and religious people teach you. Because the, the Romans, all that, they, they, these America, they get their religion from the Greeks. And the Greeks wasn't that, that religious. And you can go in your Bible and it'll tell you somewhere in the Bible where one of the Greeks told the Romans, that you people are too religious. Right in the Bible, somebody's telling someone, you, you people are too religious. Because they take things too far. There's a lot of religious people right now at Thanksgiving partaking in foods that they shouldn't partake of. So sin is in the heart of the doer. Just like beauty is in the eyes of the beholder. You know when you're sinning under your religion or whatever. So eat whole grain foods more. 
stay away from white sugar, white rice, things like that. I don't do it, but I'm sharing with y'all today um, to do these things. Um, that's the deal on Thanksgiving. So, uh, just know certain things, man. I'm trying to go into my notes and um, give y'all a little bit more. But, um, just know that everything that <clears throat> we've been educated to believe has come from a direction other than the direction that your soul actually comes from. So this is why things sometimes don't fit with you. And that brings me to a question. Are you doing what you want to do or are you doing what you have to do? Because in that question alone, one can just answer it or ask it to itself answer answer it yourself and you'll get your way your own self to tell yourself are you successful because the answer is in the question or the question is in the answer or whatever are you doing what you want to do or are you getting up every day complaining going to work busting your ass turn, paying bills doing what you have to do to survive then you're not living it's better to be living maybe financially taking a, a hit but your soul is correct. You understand? Because once you don't feed your soul, nothing matters. Profit, you know, and again, what to, what is there for a man to gain the whole world and then lose their soul? And we have to keep a moral compass about everything we do. We go out and get educated by this European, but we don't actually enlighten ourselves. And then keep the light illuminating until it becomes bright, back to where you come from, brightness. And your brightness is the sun that shines upon the moon and makes the moon light. That's why they call it moonlighting. I don't deal with moonlighting. I'm gonna elevate y'all from the light to the, the hierarchy of everything is brightness. Right now, your light has to be turned on and it has to go up higher and higher and higher until it becomes too bright. And when it becomes too bright, that's when you become someone not to deal with or someone crazy or someone that speaks out the box because now you're getting your wisdom put in you from the place that you're really from. You understand? Your mind and your brain again works together. Your brain is just a receiver. It's just receiving information, receiving thoughts from dimensions and it has to be sent to your mind in order for you to for your mind to send back the right, you know, the right direction for you to go in, the right answer to the question that your brain scrambles. Your brain is an ultimate receiver, period. But your mind lies in the cosmos. And the only way for you to align yourself properly with your mind is through your diet, through your thinking, and through what you do. Not what you, but not what you believe in. You're a part of the people who don't have to believe. You don't have to have faith, you don't have to have hope. You don't have to go to church, you don't have to be a religious person, you don't even have to pray. You're, you're already solar connected to something, you just have to get back into the vibration, onto the rhythm of the universe. And that's God. The God, true God, the true immaculate, or the true great one goes by the name of Amen. Okay? Amen is the true God. Do not get fooled because you were educated to believe certain things. You have to enlighten yourself and trust the new thoughts that you get that didn't come from nowhere else because now that becomes your thinking. Up until then, your, your thoughts, whatever you close your mind, whatever book you read, you're getting it from somewhere else. Whether it was someone who enlightened you, a smart man who wrote a book, you still got enlightened by someone else's wisdom. Great. Take all of that, because I did it. Take it all, if it was wise, and it checked out. Take all of that now. Leave it alone. It's in you. Now go for self. Follow yourself. Follow what do you finally think. I've been to school all my life. I'm taking tests. I'm getting degreed. I'm going to be a nurse. I'm going to do this. I'm working. I got my husband. I got to cook. I got, I got my wife. I got to go here. I'm getting up. I'm paying these bills. I'm arguing with my wife. What do you feel? What do you think you need? 
Stop listening to everybody else. Cut the TV off. Start eating right. Stay out your phone. Meditate. Go under the sun. If you the person that your bed laying in position where the sun comes in in the morning, lay right underneath it. No music, no nothing, not your children, you. And let the true God talk to you. Let Amen talk to you. Because you people have been educated to believe so many things that by normality you just think it's right. Like if I just say, yo, I fresh out my mother's womb, you won't think I said nothing wrong. Because you people have been educated wrong. No one has come out their mother's womb. You sit in the uterus. You, no one has been in their mother's womb, but we've been educated to believe. You could be a nurse right now and wouldn't really know that until you really look it up. And you would have to understand why they're teaching you this way. That goes for their scientists, their psychologists, their whoever. They don't give them the full teachings that they stole from the Moorish people, from the Egyptians, or things of that nature. We're listening to a fallen angel society. We've been educated by our own people, Atlanteans, ancient Egyptians, who choose to use us as slaves and teach us that they are our gods. I'm teaching you that that is a race of beings that went astray, the fourth race, but I'm trying to share with you races behind the 444 that didn't tell you they were your gods. They told you to go be and explore and even be greater, just like you wouldn't teach your child to worship you, you would teach your child to be greater than you. I'm taking you back to Genesis. I don't mean to keep doing it, but it's there for you to see. You are the person that manifests in Genesis. It's Thanksgiving, right? Get your Bibles out. Do some. Do a little bit of work. See, what is he talking about? Go into Genesis to when God formed man from the dust of the earth and then breathed into this man his breath of life and man became a living soul. Stop right there and do your own thinking. I'm, I'm quoting that because they stole that from a place higher that I can break that down in a different way. That means the flora was added to you. So why would I get into that? Because the next question would be, well, what is the flora? I'm telling you what you were formed from was dinosaur genetic that was on the earth. Check meteorites or check uh, uh, what they teach you about how the dinosaurs were taken out. I don't think it was actually meteorites, but we'll just use meteorites. Then comes man. Then comes this man who manifests. If God breathed into someone, then you come from an eternal source. It's not a creation. You're not a part of creation. God breathed into you, and don't let nobody take that away from you. Don't let nobody take that one chapter away from you. With all the little tricks they got in there before they let us make man in our image and after our likeness they go from me so god so god they said let us make man in our image then two lines later is and then the man was made in god's image alone then it just had said us who is the us you know it's just so so crazy in there but just focus on when they're dealing with god because you believe that's the true god let's deal with when they were dealing with god he formed you breathed into you right there God is eternal and he breathed into you and then you became. You wasn't created, you became. You were manifest now. You were projected here. Just like when they say, let us make man in our images and after our likeness, that's the cloning system. Images, duplications. They've been into this. This is the cloning thing. The war in heaven. Michael cloned himself and fought that war. You don't know that, but your Bible do tell you there's a war in heaven and there's God in heaven had an angel named Michael that he sent to war against two other, 200 other angels. Michael cloned himself. They didn't have to use, if you have a technology, what the U.S. armies and militaries are trying to do right now to not use people and send in a robot or send in a clone, and that's how you fight your war. They've been had this. So you're reading books, revelations, that story will be in the war in heaven and revelations. I don't know how to decipher it or decode it. The war was of was Michael cloning himself. And then these fallen angels came where to earth. Your Bible don't tell you where they are on earth, so you don't know no more. Because your religious system didn't educate you anymore after that. You can just read that 200 angels fell to earth. Your information stops. You know nothing about what they're manifesting to, where they went, where they were locked away. What are they doing now? What families are they? How are they ruling the world? Why are we calling it Illuminati? They're just talking. They just got unks on. 
couldn't tell me 30 different things about the uncle right now. You, would, you should be able to tell me, let's, let's cut it down to 15. You should be able to teach me the energies or what it's connected to. You should be able to teach me about a cross if you have one across. You should be able to know that Nibiru was a planet of the crossing. That we've been talked about a planet of the crossing and that this very angel award for you, Michael, became Jesus or became someone who took over and he was Jesus' angel. If you want to believe that, if you want it that way, you have to know more. It's not for you to believe. I don't teach a belief system. And that's another problem. You people think you're listening to someone you have to believe. Just listen and take it in. You turn around and go do your research or your homework. Don't believe me. You're right. That's the problem. I'm getting you out of being a dummy, going somewhere, and just because someone's sitting in the seat or it's called church or it's called the, the temple of this, and this guy comes out on the road, you think you got to believe him because he's degreed by who? I'm teaching you that degrees come from them. It comes from them. I'm the real truth, the way, and the light. Anything that come out of my mouth, you can go any pantheism that, they, that we have here on this planet, Terra. Because we came here again, began creating, and the creation that we created became extra beings that come, that came to Terra. We're not extraterrestrials. I'm a native to this planet. Then if God created the heavens and the earth and everywhere I step on this planet is holy, but you've been educated to believe you're from Africa, and you don't give your God big enough credit to see that he spread your family all over this place. But you went through educational system and your white man keeps telling you you're from Africa. And you think that's where all the best minerals are. Because you can go and read it in their books. There's beautiful minerals everywhere. There were, there were four kingdoms. The mineral kingdom, the plant kingdom, the animal kingdom, and the hum human kingdom. Minerals were first on the planet, not in Africa. Fool, if you know that it was one pangene, then where was Africa? Where was Africa? Minerals had to be first and then a plant life had to come to the whole earth is a plant as a plant if you ask me Because the, 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 the earth had to be soiled. It had to it had to be ready So everything comes from minerals to a plant life and then plant life grows You understand that? You come from being manifest out of some out of a high order. Let's just say they use the word God. I would choose you to use a force higher, a technology higher, <laughs> beings higher than you're capable under or overstanding. So you're educated to believe everything that you know. Think about it. Even if you think about something, even if you verse me. What are you versing me by? Something you were educated to believe. I'm not saying something. 